You've played so many powerful female characters throughout your career. Who are the women in your own life who shaped the storyteller that you are today? Oh, that's a lovely question. I mean, obviously my mom, she's, I'm so lucky to have such a wonderful relationship with her, but she, I wouldn't be acting if it wasn't for her. When I was 15, she traveled back and forth between Texas and LA with me so I could follow my dreams and just her selflessness. Um, I, I strive to be more like her every day. You're no stranger to playing characters who've lived in different mediums and have this already established fan base. Does that bring a different pressure as you start filming these projects? Did you find that your experience working on Stargirl helped alleviate some of that pressure heading into Dawn? Yeah, well, I definitely remember when I first booked Stargirl, I was super nervous because comic book fans are so passionate and very particular, and I love that about them. But honestly, it that was received so well that after that, every time I'm trusted with bringing an adaptation to life, it just feels like such an honor to get to be part mm. of a franchise. And just that it, the responsibility is an honor. Yeah. Now, while so much of Dawn's life is impacted through the reveal that happens in the first film, music remains a cornerstone of her identity. When you're playing a character who has such a strong connection to music, how does that alter your preparation process? Yeah, so I actually, I, I'm not a singer. And I told them that with like the the <laughs> first uh, the first audition, they were like, so can you sing? And I'm like, no, but they were so kind to like trust me even, even with trying to portray that. And um, I think for me, like I do create playlists for my characters. So I think with Dawn, it was even more important to really spend time and effort into that playlist. And it's fun because it was started in the 70s. So getting to kind of yeah. The, the, and like what would Don be listening to on the weekends yeah yeah do you remember do you remember what was on that playlist definitely the Beatles like she's vibing <laughs> like 1000 yeah. percent you know in addition to the incredible work that you've done on screen you've also started writing have you found that your experiences behind the scenes have now impacted the way that you approach your work on screen and vice versa specifically with characters like Don Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like when, when I'm writing specifically, I do almost go at it from an actor's perspective. Like I'll be saying the line, like, how would I want this set? Like there needs to be a the there and very much vice versa, because now I feel more confident with my writing. When I read something, I pick, I like think how, how did the writer write this? What did they envision when they were writing this? And then doing my best to, to pre present that. Oh, great answer. And there's so much vulnerability that you have to tap into when you're playing a character like Dawn, who's had her life turned upside down at the start of these films. So you brought so much nuance to that journey. As an actress, how did you create the space for yourself to dive into that emotional arc? Yeah, you know, this was honestly probably the most emotionally taxing character I've done thus far. Um, it, it was challenging, but I, I'm so grateful for it. And I just remember there would be days where I, I was, I, I mean, I, man, I can't spoil anything. Um, <laughs> so I'll just say like a lot of the stuff that Dawn went through, like Breck personally hasn't gone through. So I kind of had to research in different ways than I mm. normally, normally I pull from my, my own life experience, but I was, I tried to watch films and, and shows that kind of inspired my work. Speaking of that emotional journey, you're such a standout in this film, and there's so much that's thrown at your character. Is there a scene in particular that you're excited for your fans to see? And which was the most uh, one that you were most nervous to film? I was definitely most nervous to to film the scene with Michael Sutton, just because I it, it's very different. I've never experienced something like that, like you know, mm, yeah. teacher student relationship. Um, but Joey McIntyre was so professional, such a wonderful scene partner, so present with me. And I was actually really proud of the work we did on those days. So I was equally just as nerd, like equally as nervous for those scenes. And also like, that's one of the scenes I'm most excited for people to see. And there's so much trust that's needed when you're tackling a storyline like this. How are you able to build that with the rest of your, your, your co-stars? Honestly, I think because everyone was thrown into it so quickly, it was kind of a whirlwind. We didn't get months to prepare these characters. So there had to be so much trust within us for that support. So I think that bonded us all so quickly. All right. We're going to also get to see your character throughout the decades from, you know, when she was a child all the way to when she's a parent. How, what is that process like for you preparing to tackle such a long arc throughout the, the four films? Yeah, well, I worked very closely with hair, makeup, and wardrobe. Um, mm. I mean, like, how can we present her to seem younger and how can we age her? And they were so receptive to it. It was such a collaborative experience. Um, 
but also just like posture, walking, tone of voice. Typically with age, voice gets a little deeper, raspier. Mm. I did, I played with some physical elements that I, I never had to for a role before. Um, and so it was fun because now I feel like I kind of have that in my tool belt to use. Yeah, you've said in previous interviews that this project has pushed you as an actor and storyteller. What's been the biggest thing you've learned about your craft embodying Dawn and leading these films? Honestly, that like, sometimes being intimidated by things doesn't mean I shouldn't do it because in the past like there's certain content that if it scares me mm -hmm. I would take a step back and there was there was a lot of content in here that made me really nervous just because I had no yeah. life experience about it and just throwing yourself into the role it it taught me that like don't be scared to do things you don't know about there's so many universal themes that this film, these films are going to cover throughout the, the four. Was there one in particular that hit home for you? What do you hope audiences take away after they see it? Uh, probably the chosen family aspect. You know, at the beginning, she finds out who she thought was her biological family. Aren't. Yeah. And she goes through this journey almost choosing who, despite blood, is her family. And I think that's so beautiful because I definitely, I love my family, like my, my biological family, but I do have such a chosen family in my life as well. And I, I, I think respecting chosen family is so important. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's such a great chemistry that comes off the screen between you and the entire cast. Do you have a favorite behind the scenes moment from this filming experience? Oh my gosh. I have so many. We like, you know, you always hear people like, oh, I was so close with the cast. Like, these people will be my friends for life. I went to freaking, after I finished filming, I went to Austria with the girl who plays Trisha and we like traveled Europe together and I've gone snowboarding with half the cast. And so we really did, we had honestly too much fun where it didn't even feel like we were <laughs> worth the time. Um, I, one, one day in particular I really enjoyed was, I'll just say a wedding scene to not give away spoilers, but because it was a big wedding, every, basically the whole cast was there and we just had so much fun the entire day getting to be dressed up. Um, that day was really special to me. And then outside of this project, what's next for you? I've been so fortunate to be really busy. Um, so I just uh, wrapped a movie with Trisha Helfer, which I don't have, I can't talk about it other than that, but I don't have a release date for that. Should have a release date for a movie I did last year called Man in the White Van. That'll be coming out sometime this year. And then I'm going to Utah next month to film my next project. I want to find a question for you. You've done it all throughout your career. What's left on your bucket list, either as an actress or as a writer? I can't lie. Like one of the biggest things on my list was a book adaptation. I had done the yeah. comic adaptation. And so getting to do this, it was so fulfilling. Like this was such a bucket list thing for me. Um, I'm going to say like a biopic, like getting to uh, portray a real life person and bring them to life. That's next thing on my bucket list. 